What up, you nerds? Fallout here, and today I'm going to show you how to easily conquer the final Grandmaster Nightfall in Season of the Risen, Birthplace of the Vile. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Big thanks to the absolute chads who do. Birthplace can feel kind of long, but difficulty-wise, it's actually really tame when compared to Glassway or that other Grandmaster that I will no longer be referring to by name. I'm going to show you some really reliable loadout options and give a few encounter-specific tips, so even if you're not amazing at Grandmasters, you'll get through birthplace with hardly any trouble at all. By the way, today's video is brought to you by Apex Gaming PCs. If you want to get an awesome high performance gaming PC, but you don't know where to start, don't even worry about it. Apex has got you completely covered. Hit the link down in the video description to check out their beautiful machines and remember to use discount code fallout at checkout to receive up to $250 off your purchase. Thank you, Apex. All right, back to the content. If you're looking for just a full run of the GM Nightfall, I'll put a link to that down in the pinned comment. You can definitely do it faster than we did, but again, even when moving fairly quick, birthplace can be a kind of long and tedious nightfall. Why don't we do the following? First, go over what to expect in the GM. Next, talk about what loadouts you can rock. Then finally, a brief walkthrough with tips for annoying areas. All right, what to expect. Vile features overload and unstoppable champions, in addition to a void burn. Think about bringing at least one void weapon to the party if you can for that extra 25% damage output. Funnel web, palindrome, the brand new title, SMG, Bottom Dollar, Grid Skipper, and Gnawing Hunger are all great primary weapon options if you have one available. Really any Void Pulse Rifle, Hand Cannon, SMG, or Auto would get the job done though. There are mostly Void Shields in Vile, although there will be a small number of Arc and Solar guys too. I'd say plan mostly for Void. The Arc and Solar enemies are well before the boss room, so you can just brute force them if need be. The following weapons aren't mandatory, but some combination of them on your team is highly recommended. Galar Horn, paired together with two legendary void rocket launchers for extra damage output. G Horn and rocket launchers is good for immediately nuking champions with big damage. Very straightforward strategy if you want a non complicated team loadout. Wither Horde. The final fight in the boss room is going to feature a lot of annoying ads. In fact, if you do wipe in the boss room, I would bet money that you'd be dying to a champion or ads, not the boss. Wither Horde is great for dealing with the annoying, never ending waves of trash enemies. Divinity helps deal with overload champions and makes dealing with all champions way easier. I'd say if you're rocking divinity, maybe go with void linear fusion rifles to kill champions easily from far away. Threaded needle. Again, if you're not going with the G-Horn rocket launcher team method, threaded needle hits pretty hard due to the inherent void burn. Class-wise, void 3.0 works really well for the boss room. Warlocks, overcharging vortex grenades on repeat is 100% a very safe and effective play. If you have very high discipline and controverse hold, Every time an ad wave pops in during the boss fight, you can immediately destroy all of them with little effort. I actually ran Verity's Brow, because I'm weird, and even though that worked fine, looking back on it, yeah, just run Controverse Hold. I know people love arguing when I bring this up, but I think it's worth mentioning. If you have two Warlocks on your team, and one of them is already running Void 3.0, you could either do Double Void, or you could have one run a Shade Binder. I know Freezing Champions can F with their ability to take damage, but the turret is really beneficial in the boss room encounter. I'm just saying, don't write it off. Hunters, camo with Omnioculus is tried and true, and there's no reason to not run it here. If your teammates die in the boss room and you have both Omni, high mobility, and high strength, you can literally be perma camo and get free revives when needed. Titan players, you could go bubble or banner shield to be a little defensive in the boss room. That can be nice if you're on the brink of death and need to drop a panic super to either live or get a revive. Ursa Furiosa, Helm of Saint-14 are both good options but don't forget about Heart of Inmost Light. Works great with Void 3.0 and PvE, and you can really speed up your ability regen, which is going to be good for dealing with trash in the boss room fight. Titan players could also potentially go Thunder Crash with the Falling Star. Yeah, it's a Void Burn, but Thunder Crash is almost never a bad play in GM content. Ballsy, but never bad. You could use it to immediately murder champions in the boss room, not to mention deal chunk damage to the big bad when need be. Remember though that no matter what class you play, and any Aeon exotic armor is never ever a bad choice if you can't figure out what else to equip. Armor mods, I think you want to prep mainly for the boss room, and with that in mind, you should either go double void protection on your chest armor, or maybe one void and one concussive dampener. A lot of damage in the boss room is void, and staying alive is naturally top priority. For more protection, you should go with either Well of Tenacity if you're doing an elemental well build, or Protective Light if you're doing Charged with Light. Keep in mind though that protective 
of Light got nerfed a while back, I'd probably recommend going Elemental Well and Tenacity together. Especially with Void 3.0, wells are really easy to build into right now. If you're going Void, you can also bring the Overload Grenade Armor mod. Might as well, right? One extra way to help deal with champions, never a bad thing. At least one person on your team, but maybe more, should be running Lucent Finisher from your artifact. Finishing a champion is free heavy ammo, so why not? Ammo Finder on your helmet and Scavenger for your booties. If you intend on throwing a lot of nades in the boss room to cover ads, which you should, don't forget about the bomber mod on your class armor. All right, now for a quick walkthrough and a few key tips. In the first area, after dealing with two overload champions and jumping over a tiny ledge, be really careful about the next wave of enemies that spawn in. There's two void sniper scorn in the back and they can one shot you. I would play it kind of safe until those snipers in the back are completely dead. They're borderline more dangerous than a champion. In the very next area, you'll need to stand on an orange plate on the floor and defend it in order to move on. You can do this either one of two ways. If you have a hunter on your fire team with Omni and really high strength and mobility, you can literally have them just perma camo on the plate while the other two guardians chill way in the back. I don't have any footage on my end of that happening, but Mactix does. Shout out to him. The other method, if you don't have a camo hunter, is to activate the plate, then back way up and keep murdering all the scorn until there are none left. Then you can just walk in when everybody's dead and take the plate with no challenge. It's going to seem that the scorn repeatedly spawn in forever, but they don't. Just wait until no more pop up and you'll be good. In the next area, there's going to be a bunch of scorn snipers on the far left on the cliff wall. They can be pretty deadly. Try to deal with them at range and be careful they can one shot you. Eventually, you'll get to an area with a big staircase. After killing everyone on at that staircase, the next room can be tricky. Don't run in through that doorway immediately. There's an overload champion and snipers to your left. If you have a shade binder, throw a turret into the room, but if not, just take it slow. Pick off enemies you can see in front of you, then pop in and deal with the group on the left. The next open area can be really dangerous. Right when you go through the door, two unstoppable champions and a bunch of scorn are going to spawn in. If you have range, deal with them at range, or I would recommend literally running in right away and taking cover to an area directly on your right. Should help you deal with enemies a little bit easier. There's two orange plates in this room that you have to capture. Do them one at a time if you want to be safe. Again, if you have a camo hunter, you can have them perma invis one plate or both. Otherwise, just take your time. The scorn will spawn in forever here, so you're gonna have to get active and get on that plate while fighting them. One thing that I see a lot that I actually don't recommend you do is dropping a titan bubble directly on top of the orange plate. Yeah, you'll get protection from being shot, but it's literally begging for a screeb to creep in and ruin your entire run. Drop a bubble either halfway onto the plate or off to the side for last minute protection. Up ahead, the big wide open area with the huge ramp can be kind of damned annoying. Just remember to not rush. They're going to throw a lot of void at you. Play it at range and you'll be fine. Save the two champions for the end and finish them if you're rocking Aeon or if you have a loosened finisher. Eventually, you'll find yourself in the boss room. Again, your biggest problem will be dealing with trash enemies. Grenade spam or wither horde every time a group of them drops in, and if you have rocket launchers, don't be afraid to use them to clear a group of ads if you're feeling overwhelmed. After every third of the boss's health bar is gone, you're going to get teleported to a new area. It's easy to die in there if you're not careful about screeves. There's a part in that room where you need to leapfrog to jump over a bottomless pit. Don't all jump over to the other side at the same time, because right when you get to the other side, screeves are going to pop in. I'd say go one at a time if you want to be really safe. When you're back in the boss room, focus on ads, and whenever you get a free moment between ad waves, try and do damage to the big boss. And uh, that's really it. If you can deal with the ads, you're pretty much home free. If you have a loadout or tactic that works for you and your team that I didn't mention, let me know what that is down in the comment section. Good luck. Again, I have a link to a full run down below. Check it out if you need to. Remember to subscribe. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.